you've caught me in the midst of a multi-part series where I'm gonna intercool my manual swapped and supercharged Lexus GS 400. If you haven't seen any of those episodes or series, be sure to go back and check them out. I show every step of the way to manual swap a GS 400, and I show every step of the way to supercharge it. Now, I must intercool it. Part one covered all the parts you're gonna to need to intercool your Lexus GS 400 if you have an M112 supercharger with the Elate manifold. We're gonna talk about fitment, about getting the heat exchanger into the front end of the vehicle properly and getting it set up. This is the heat exchanger by DH Racing. It is two and a half inches deep. It has three fourths inch fittings. It is about 26 inches from right here to right here on this bracket. It has a port which doesn't matter to me much because I'm just, I'm not gonna utilize that. Some padding on here to protect the fins. I obviously won't run it like that. Where this is gonna go is right down inside here. These are actually off a Toyota Sienna and these were part of the running board system. I had a friend who said, I want these running boards off. I don't want them anymore. And I collected all of the hardware in a box. You can see where I wanna cut because I've already kind of mapped this out a little bit. But let me show you what the plan is. The plan is to mount these onto a piece of metal that I'll show you on the car. And I should be able to secure that front mount with enough room going that way. So this, this would be the idea right here. If you guys wanna get something like this, you can see where you're gonna need to cut. I'm gonna put this grinder on and get these not so sharp, nice and flat. As the saying goes, good enough for government work. Okay, made a quick decision here to cut this as you see. And the reason for that is so that this bracket can get a little bit closer to that condenser. Based on some fit up concerns, I have decided to go ahead and cut this panel out right here because when this bracket is fitted inside the car, there will be access issues to these fittings right here. I decided to make a mock-up using an old two by six board here. I fastened the brackets down to it right here, just with some temporary screws. And then I got my clearances down so that there's still plenty of clearance there, plenty of clearance right there and right there. Also up here, I'm gonna need to keep an eye on that. And then I put marks where I'll need to use the drill press to create a way for fasteners to go through here. Probably a bolt and a nut setup. Obviously can't go too far this way because I don't want to come close to any hoses here. Decided to lift the car in the air and get this whole bumper cover off. It's not that hard to get it off. There we go. Okay, I removed this brace and you can see how much it prevents flexing. So it's actually pretty important. You may have to figure out something else here later. You can take this little tab here and just bend it up. That leaves you the room you're gonna need to see if this will fit, and it does. You can see it's touching the condenser hard line here. It's touching on the side and it has a protective foam thing. There they are. Wasn't going for beauty here. I was just going to make them look a little bit better. This would also be a great time to freshen up 
some of the problem areas with black paint if you wish to do so. I had a couple surface rust spots that I just, I mean, they're hidden, but I didn't like them anyways. So I painted them. And then under here, <clears throat> this was pretty messed up from 170,000 miles of wear. So I used some fast dry paint to make it look a little bit better. And you can also hit your condenser if you want to, because mine is looking pretty bad. You can see the little fins in there are all bent up. They're super fragile, but the air conditioning still works great. So I'm not gonna mess with it. The next step is to go ahead and get these fitted up in here. Now, this one on, on this side, this bracket over here, I'm gonna have to leave loose so that I can move it out of the way and fish the heat exchanger up. That's the only way that you can get the size heat exchanger to fit in here. And then after that, I'm gonna tighten down the screws using a wrench, a real skinny wrench, going underneath the heat exchanger. So I'll go ahead and get these on right now. Okay. And yes, it's supposed to be at an angle like this. I ran that one in and you can see it's very loose and that's on purpose because I need to be able to push this over to fit the heat exchanger up in there and then move it back. Get this in here as far as I can and then lift it up and bring it back down around that bracket. And then you can access these by tightening them with a wrench right under there. Right down in there, you can see that I have placed the fasteners, the, the bolts through, and the nuts on. Same, it's better view over here. And I still need to tighten them up. They're a little loose, but I didn't want to take you through every tedious turn of my wrench. See, that one's still loose, that's fine. I'm gonna have to get an Allen wrench back there or something and hold it while I turn that 12 mil. Well, there you have it guys, it fits. I'm pretty happy about it. It looks exactly like a front mount intercooler and it looks really good. So if you want that look with your twin screw superchargers such as the M112, you can do it. If you want to intercool yours and have that cool heat exchanger up front, it is definitely possible. I think I'm gonna end the episode here. We'll move on to another episode, uh, probably the last episode, episode three, where we get the whole system up and running. So be sure to subscribe, hit that like button, and comment. We'll see you on the next episode. Thanks for watching.